Hello YouTube family, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lauren McKinney and if this is your first time here, then welcome. I love making videos about capsule wardrobing and sustainable style made easy. So if that sounds like something that you're interested, go ahead and click that subscribe button down below so that you can see more of my content. Now today I'm going to be talking about some of the biggest capsule wardrobing mistakes that I personally made when I was just starting my capsule wardrobing journey. Two years ago, I started my capsule wardrobe journey and along the way up until now, I have made several mistakes and I want to highlight some of them for you so that if you're interested in capsule wardrobing, you can learn from my mistakes and don't have to make them yourself. And of course, make sure to like this video if you like this video and let me know down below in the comments if you've ever made any wardrobe mistakes and what they were. Let's go ahead and get into the video. So the first mistake that I made when I started capsuling is probably one of my biggest, and that is copying someone else's capsule. Some of you know, based on my past videos, that when I started my capsule wardrobing journey, I relied really heavily on Sina Hansen's Effortless Style series, which by the way, if you don't know her channel, her channel is called Use Less. It's one of my favorite channels. I still watch it all the time. Anyways, she even has said on her channel, not to copy somebody else's capsule during your capsule wardrobing journey. The second mistake that you want to avoid when building a capsule wardrobe is to copy someone else's capsule wardrobe completely. But when I watched it, I thought to myself, oh, that doesn't really apply to me because my style is just like Sina's, so it won't be a big deal. I'll just copy it and it'll be fine. <sighs> And here I am two years later, kicking my butt for straight up copying her All Your Basics capsule wardrobe. Now, I was really new to the process, so I didn't know where to start. And in that way, using somebody else's capsule as a reference can be really helpful. And don't get me wrong, there are several places where my style overlaps with Sina's. She has a wonderful, wonderful style. But there is no personal style that is just like another personal style. They're all different. Sometimes that also means that the foundations of your capsule, even if these are basic pieces, are going to be different as well. One example of this is that in the iteration of Sina's All Your Basics capsule that I was using when I first started my capsule wardrobing journey, she had a army green jacket and it looks really great on her. So naturally I was like, she has one? Well, I should also have one. And I did my best and I got it second hand, which was really, really great. But in buying the army jacket because she had an army jacket in her capsule wardrobe was me completely missing the point of capsule wardrobing. So here it is, still two years later, in the back of my closet and listed on Poshmark for sale. What a waste of time and money it was to find a jacket just because somebody else had that same jacket. And now it doesn't even get anywhere. Thankfully, I purchased it secondhand, but still kind of a loss for me. Another example is Sina's fantastic use of leopard print. I believe she has like a leopard print bomber in her fall autumn or in her fall winter capsule wardrobe. And I thought to myself, well, if Sina wears leopard print, then I should probably do that too, right? Wrong. Anyways, I ended up buying a full vintage leather print dress on Poshmark, took it to my seamstress, had it had the pieces separated so that it was a top and a skirt, wore the skirt maybe twice, and one of them was for Halloween, and then I hung it up, decided I didn't use it enough, ended up selling it on Poshmark for a loss. And so as you can see, based on my own errors, that copying someone's capsule directly is never going to get you to where you wanna be in your wardrobe journey. Just buying something because another capsule wardrobist has it isn't the way to get to your ideal capsule wardrobe. Now I know that I prefer different silhouettes of jacket and that I prefer floral patterns much more over leopard print patterns. That's my personal style. So getting in touch with your personal style before you start capsule wardrobing is way more important than just finding somebody that you like and copying their capsule.
The second capsule wardrobing mistake that I made was buying and planning for a lifestyle that does not suit me. So this can apply to any kind of aspect of your life, whether you have a really formal job, a casual job, whether you're in school, you stay at home. This is a really important thing to consider as you start building your capsule wardrobe. For me, I made this mistake in regards to the climate in which I live. Now, for those of you who watch my channel, you'll know that I live in Southern California. So even in the winter time, it doesn't ever really get that cold. But when I started my capsule wardrobing journey, leather jackets were like such a thing. And they also seemed like such a good timeless basic. So I essentially convinced myself that I needed to have one because it was a great staple piece. So what did I do? I bought one. Then I wore it twice. I ended up selling it on Poshmark again at a loss. Not only did it not fit my style, but it just was not practical for me. So learn from my advice and make sure to take into consideration not only your lifestyle, but the place in which you live as well. The third mistake that I made when I was starting my capsule wardrobing journey was trying to be done as quickly as possible. Now, I've said this before and I'll say it again right now. Capsuling is an ongoing process. When I first started capsuling, I just wanted to buy it all up, check all these things off of my list and just be done with it. And sure, if you create a shopping list, you can check off a bunch of items. But by doing this, you'll probably end up buying things that you don't need, as well as missing out on some things that could fill some serious gaps in your wardrobe. Like the examples that I've provided, an army jacket, a leather jacket, and a leather print skirt. These were things that were on my list that I just bought super fast, but that actually did not fulfill a role in my wardrobe. And in the process, I missed out on patterns, colors, and pieces that I really like. For example, the midi skirt that I just bought for my fall winter capsule wardrobe is something I would have never thought of buying two years ago because I didn't think that a floral pattern fit the capsule wardrobing lifestyle. Now that I have one and have done my research and planned for it, I see that it is an essential part of my wardrobe and that I'm going to get a lot of wear out of it. It fits in with my personal style and I'm so excited that this gap that was in my wardrobe that I missed is now filled. I was so intent on checking things off of a list that other people had on their lists that I didn't even think about what I liked. My point with this is that capsuling takes time. And oftentimes it changes along the way. This is not linear. This is like this <laughs> and that's okay. The fourth mistake that I made when I was starting my capsule wardrobing was being super strict with myself. Now, some people are super strict about their capsules and it works for them and that's fine but it just wasn't working for me. And when I say strict, I specifically mean strict when it comes to seasonal divisions. Now, once again, just referencing practicality, dividing up my capsule wardrobe into four seasons just wasn't working. And when I tried to be really strict about that, I found that I was getting stressed and anxious about capsule wardrobing and wanting to give up. So instead of actually giving up, I thought through the issue and I figured out a way to make it work best for my lifestyle. That's why I personally divide my capsule wardrobe into two main parts, warm weather and cool weather, instead of spring, summer, fall, winter. If you're getting into your capsule wardrobe in a way that is so strict that it becomes overwhelming, and whenever you do something wrong, you're riddled with guilt and anxiety, then you're not going to create a long lasting capsule wardrobe, which in the end is the opposite of what you want. So make sure you're choosing a direction that you can sustain over a long period of time. Now this last one probably applies to a lot of us, especially since many of us are stuck at home and trying to either do like some serious spring cleaning, even though it's not spring. And so my fifth mistake is decluttering too quickly. If you've ever cleaned out your closet or your house, 
you know that decluttering can be so, so, so addicting, especially if you manage to post those things online and sell them. Getting a notification that you've sold something is like so exciting. And so it can just prompt you to sell more and more and more and post more and more and purge more and more. But sometimes we get so caught up in the exhilarating nature of decluttering that we forget to give some of these items a chance. Now, I have definitely gotten rid of my fair share of items, and I'd rather not list or talk about some of the items that I've gotten rid of that I wish I hadn't because I don't want to dwell in the past. But I do want to talk about the way that I go about decluttering now. Instead of just listing things immediately on Poshmark or taking them to the thrift store, I try to give my items a little bit of a chance. So I put them in the extra closet that I have in my bedroom and I just let them marinate there for a little bit. If I think about them and I wanna wear them, I'll wear them. They're still there, I haven't given them away, no mistakes have been made. But if I don't think about it after a while, don't reach for it, don't care about it, and even forgotten completely that is it, that it exists, then that's a sign that it's time to let that thing move along to somebody who will use it more than I will. This is a much slower process. And to be honest, a lot of the time you don't get that same exhilarating high from selling a lot of things at the same time. But I think that a capsule wardrobe is necessarily slow. In the end, this process is going to keep you from making hasty decisions that you'll regret later on. And that's totally worth how long it takes. So that's my video for today. I hope that you've enjoyed reminiscing in some of my capsule wardrobing errors. This is why I love this platform so much, is that we can share our own experiences and hopefully my experience with capsule wardrobing can be really, really helpful for you. Capsule wardrobing has been such a rewarding thing for me to participate in, and it's totally natural to make some mistakes throughout the process, but hopefully, my sharing my mistakes will keep you from making the same ones. And if you're like me and you're super stubborn and hard-headed, then one day when you make those mistakes, you can always come back to this video and let me know that I was right. Anyways, it's been such a joy to talk to all of you today. I hope you have a fantastic day. I wanna remind you to hit that subscribe button down below if you enjoyed this video and wanna see more of me. I can't wait to see you in the next video that I make. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. Bye!